Okay, here we go. We are going to create the answer key to go along with your study guide for your semester two final exam. And I highly encourage you to follow along with this and pause as you need to to make corrections. Watch this video as many times as you want. The exam is very similar. All right, question one, two, and three says solve each system of equations using any method. So if you remember, solving systems of equations is where we're trying to figure out if we were to graph these two lines, put them into slope-intercept form, um, where would they intersect? So what x and y will work for both equations? So for number one, I'm going to use elimination method, which means I'm going to multiply either this whole equation or this whole equation by a number so I can get rid of, eliminate a uh, variable and then substitute that back in to get the other value. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 2. This will give me negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 12 because I, I distribute that to every term. Then I have my 2x plus y equals negative 8. This is where we combine terms. Negative 2 and positive 2, now that's gone. So I'm left with negative 5y equals negative 20 divide by negative 5, y equals 4. Now I take this 4 and I choose an equation to substitute it into and find the x. So I'm going to use x plus 3 times 4 equals 6, x plus 12 equals 6, subtract 12 from both sides, x equals negative 6. So my answer is the ordered pair negative 6, 4. That's my solution. If I were to graph both those lines, they would intersect at this point. Question two, I'm going to use substitution because I know that y already equals this number. Let me get some highlighter out here. All right, so I know that y equals x minus 1. So I'm going to put that x minus 1 there where the y is. So I'm going to get 3x plus x minus 1 equals negative 5 because I took this and put it there. Combine my like terms, I get 4x minus 1 equals negative 5. Add 1 to both sides. 4x equals negative 4. Divide by 4, x equals negative 1. So now I can take this value and put it back up here. So y equals negative 1 minus 1 back into this equation y is going to equal negative 2. So my ordered pair is negative 1, negative 2. That's where the two lines would intersect if I had graphed them. Number 3 is a little bit more complicated because I'm going to have to modify both equations to get something to cancel out. So I'm going to try to get rid of my y's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2, the bottom equation by 3. That will make my y's cancel out because I'm going to get negative 8x plus 6y equals negative 24. And then I'm going to get 9x minus 6y equals 27. So then these are gone. Negative 8 plus 9 is just x. Negative 24 plus 27 is 3. So I know x equals 3. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it back into either of these equations. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 minus 2y equals 9, 9 minus 2y equals 9, subtract 9 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 2y equals 0, when I divide by negative 2 I just get y equals 0, so my ordered pair here is 3, 0. So I used elimination, substitution, elimination. Now I did have some students yesterday that were trying to use substitution here. You're going to get really nasty fractions. Some people embrace fractions, most people don't. So if it looks like it's going to, if you're going to try to isolate a variable and you're going to get a really ugly fraction, don't use that option. All right, let's move on to question four. We have Max and he's taking care of some dogs. He charges ten dogs to feed and walk each dog, ten dollars for each day for a dog and five dollars per day for a cat. So we, I'm going to say x is dogs because it says 
X represents dogs. Y represents cats. I know he charges $10 per dog plus $5 per cat, and he made $80, right? They also tell us that he had 10 total pets. So we know that X plus Y equals 10. So I'm going to do elimination method again. So I'm going to multiply this all by negative 5 so my Y's will cancel out. So I'm going to have 10X plus 5Y equals 80. That doesn't change. And then I'm going to get negative 5X minus 5Y equals negative 50. These cancel out. 10 minus 5 is 5X equals 30 because 80 minus 50 is 30. Divide by 5 x equals 6. So that tells me there are 6 dogs. I know when I add them together I get 10 total pets. So y has to be 4. So my answer would be 6 dogs, 4 cats. That's what that ordered pair represents in this scenario. Alright, number 5, we have kind of like a mixture-ish type problem. We have, it's kind of like exponential decay. So what they're looking for is what would the function be? We're not actually solving anything. We're not going to find out how much water there is left after seven hours even. We're just going to write a function that we could use to determine that. So we have f of x equals, we have 18 gallons, and then we do 1 minus, and we do the percentage as a decimal, 0 0.02, and then this stays as x because, again, we don't know how many hours. They haven't, we're not trying to figure that out yet. So my final answer will be f of x equals 18 times 0.98 raised to the x, and the x would be however many hours after it's been out in the sun. Okay. All right, moving on to number six. We have some exponents. This is where we have to kind of refresh our memory on exponent rules. So when we're multiplying and they have the same base, we add these. So we have a to the negative 9 plus 3 which gives us a to the negative 6. We can't leave it as a negative, so we flip it to the reciprocal, and then remember that 6 becomes magically positive, so 1 over a to the 6. For number 7, I'm going to multiply all the coefficients, so 3 times 4 is 12 times 2 is 24, and then I'm going to add these exponent values, so 2 plus 3 is 5, and then remember there's that secret 1 hiding there. So we're going to have 24x to the 6th. Number 8, remember this is like saying w to the 6th times w to the 6th 7 times. So instead of writing all those out and adding all the 6's up, we can just do 6 times 7. And we get w to the 42nd. Alright, this one requires a little more work. When we have this out here, we have to distribute this in. Right? We have to attach this to everything. So we're going to end up with 4 squared r to the 4th times 2 squared r to the 6th. Remember there's those little ones there, so 2 times 1 gives me 2, 2 times 2 gives me 4, 2 times 1 gives me 2, 3 times 2 gives me 6. Now I'm going to actually figure out, so I have 16 because 4 squared r to the 4th times 4 r to the 6th now I'm going to do 16 times 4 and I'm going to get 64. r to the 4th times r to the 6th, I'm going to add those, so 64 r to the 10th will be my final answer there. Alright, number 10, when we're doing division we subtract, so this is like saying d to the negative 3 minus 0, which is going to be d to the negative 3, we can't have that, so we rewrite it as 1 over d to the 3rd. And then we have number 11, where we have this 3 hanging out here. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify this. So I'm going to have 2 r to the 5th, t to the 7th. 24 divided by 12, right, goes in 2 times, that would be a 1. So I don't need to have that 1 down there. And then I have r to the 9th, t to the 4th. Now I've got this all raised to the 3rd power. So then I have to distribute this in to every one of these terms. So I'm going to get 2 to the 3rd, r to the 15th, t to the 21st, over 
r to the 27th, t to the 12th. Now I can do my subtraction here. I'm going to keep everything in its same location. I can go ahead and do 2 to the 3rd, so I'm going to get 8, r to the negative 12, t to the 9th, because 15 minus 27 is negative 12, 21 minus 12 is 9. I can't have this here. So I actually have to rewrite this as 8t to the 9th over r to the 12th. I have to shift this down here. If this was r to the negative 12 by itself, then it would be 1 over r to the 12th. But we already have terms in the numerator, so we don't have to have that 1. So there's my final answer. Okay, let's move on to the next page. It says sketch the graph y equals 2 to the x power on a coordinate plane to the right. So I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, kind of like we always have. So if I put negative 2 in for x, y equals 2 to the negative 2. I can't leave it like that. So that actually equals 1 over 2 squared, which equals 1, to the, 1 over 4. 2 to the negative 1 can't leave it like that, so I have to do 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. Do you see how I'm putting these numbers in for where x is, right? y equals 2 to the 0 power, everything to 0 equals 1. And then 2 to the first power is just going to be 2. So now I'm going to plot these. Negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 1, 1 half. 0, 1, 1, 2. And you can see how that's growing exponentially. That's it for number 12. I know it seems super complicated. All right, number 13, we are subtracting. Remember, we have this secret negative 1 here that we have to distribute. So I'm going to get 3x to the fifth plus 10x squared minus 5 minus 4x to the fifth plus 3x squared minus 13. Right, so I distribute the negative 1 to all of these. Now I combine my like terms. I can combine 3x to the fifth and negative 4x to the fifth, and I'm going to get negative x to the fifth. 10x squared, positive 10x squared, plus 13x squared is going to give me, or wait, plus 3x squared is going to give me 13x squared. And then I have negative 5, and negative 13, and that's going to give me negative 18. So here's my answer after subtracting those. All right, here we go. FOIL method. Everybody remember FOIL? So exciting. First, outer, inner, last. So 5y times 5y gives me 25y squared. 5y minus 4z times negative 4z gives me negative 20yz. 4z times 5y gives me 20yz. And then 4z times negative 4z gives me negative 16z squared. So when I combine all of these, I get 25y squared. These cancel out, minus 16z squared. For this one, this is like saying 5a plus 3 times itself. So I have 5a plus 3 times 5a plus 3. So I'm going to do my FOIL again. I'm going to get 25a squared plus 15a plus 15a plus 9. So when I combine all those, I get 25a squared plus 30a plus 9. Remember, you can pause whenever you need to as you're watching the video. Okay, now we're going to factor these polynomials. So the first one, no value here, so I can do what times what equals negative 60, what plus what equals negative 11. Our two digits are negative 15 and 4, negative 15 and 4, x minus 15 times x plus 4, and that's my final answer right there. Number 17 has a greatest common factor, which is 3. So I'm going to get 3 times g squared 
minus 12g plus 32. Now I'm going to ignore that 3, and I'm just going to factor this. So what times what equals 32? What plus what equals negative 12? So what you end up getting is negative 8 and negative 4 meet both of those requirements. So I get x minus 8 times x minus 4, and then I have to bring this 3 down for my final answer. Oops, you guys can't see that. There we go. Okay, number 18, we have to use the AC method because we have a value here for A. So 7 times negative 8 equals negative 56. So I'm going to ask myself what times what gives me negative 56. What plus what gives me 1 because that's our secret 1 right there. So my answers are going to be 8 and negative 7. X plus 8 times X minus 7. Then remember I put, oop, not X's, these are N's. Sorry, you guys know I'm really bad at that. Oh, I even did up here for this answer. These should be G's. Good grief. N, N. So now I sneak the 7 back in. 7N plus 8 times 7N minus 7. I asked myself which of these has a common, greatest common factor. Well, this one does. So I'm going to end up with... 7n plus 8, and then 7 times n minus 1, divide by a. These are now gone, so my final answer is 7n plus 8 times n minus 1. And remember, we can check our work by foiling any of these. Okay. All right. Number 19, here we go. We're going to have to use the AC method here because we have a number in front of X. So I'm going to do 25 times negative 9, which gives me uh, negative 225. Yeah, negative 225. So what times what equals negative 225? What plus what equals 0? Right, because we don't have that middle term. We don't have a B, so that's where the Oh, you guys can't see that. I'm sorry. So that's why we're trying to find the 0. So we end up with negative 15 and 15. So we get x minus 15 times x plus 15. We have to sneak that 25 back in. 25x minus 15, 25x plus 15. Here's where it got a little wonky, where you can see that you can take out 5 from each of these, right? So we get 5 times the quantity 5x minus 3, 5 times the quantity 5x plus 3. These turn into 25, which is the same as my a, so those cancel out. So my final answer is 5x minus 3 times 5x plus 3. So I took the 5 times the 5 and I got 25. And then remember, our last step is to divide by our A value. So that's where that came from. All right, number 20 is slightly easier. Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to find the zeros of these. Okay, hold on. Not done yet. That's what I get for not reading the directions. So now I have these two quantities. So I have, we're just going to go up here, 5x minus 3 equals 0, 5x plus 3 equals 0. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. 5x equals 3, divide by 5 x equals 3 fifths. Subtract 3 from both sides. 5x equals negative 3. Divide by 5. 
x equals negative 3 fifths. So here are my zeros, 3 fifths and negative 3 fifths. Remember those zeros are the x-intercepts of a parabola. Okay, this one's a little bit easier and I think we can squeeze it in over here. We don't have to use the AC method, so that gives us a lot of space. So we're going to ask ourselves, what times what equals negative 63? What plus what equals negative 2? So my thoughts are negative 9 and 7, negative 9 and 7. So we have x minus 9 times x plus 7. We set those both up equal to 0. And then it's a one-step equation. I get x equals 9 and x equals negative 7 are my zeros. Those would be my x-intercepts. Okay, number 21. Uh, looks like we need to do AC method again because we have a value here. So AC. So we're going to do 10 times 2 equals 20. So what times what equals 20? What plus what equals 9? So we're going to get 5 and 4. So we have x plus 5 times x minus 4. I've got to sneak that 10 back in there. 10x plus 5 times 10x minus 4. This is again one of those where I can take out a factor from both of these. So we've got 2 times 5x, excuse me, 5 times 2x plus 1 and 2 times 5x minus 2. This 5 and this 2 come together to make 10. Divide by my a, so that's gone. So I'm left with 2x plus 1 times 5x minus 2. But I'm not done yet. I have to find the zeros of those. So 2x plus 1 equals 0. 5x minus 2 equals 0. 2x equals negative 1 x is going to be negative one-half once I divide by the two. Add two, add two. Five x equals two. And then I'll get x equals two-fifths when I divide by the five. So there are my zeros. And hopefully you're understanding how like when I multiply these I get the ten, divide by a, just like we did in the um, couple practice problems. All right. Whew, number 22, working our way through. We're going to find the roots of the quadratic equation. It says here, if necessary, express your solution in simplest radical form. We're just going to not do simplest radical form. We're going to find the radical, add or subtract like we did um, when we practiced this. So I'm going to take the square root of x plus 3 squared, and I'm going to take the square root of 64. I'm going to get x plus 3 equals plus or minus 8. So I'm going to get subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to get x equals negative 3 plus or minus 8. So a negative 3 plus 8 gives me 5. Negative 3 minus 8 gives me 11. So those are my zeros. Those are my x-intercepts of the parabola. All right, similar thing here. I have to get this 5 over to this side. So now I have x plus 6 squared equals 5. Take the square root of both sides. I get x plus 6 equals, let me see, what is the square root of 5? x plus 6 is about plus or minus 2.2. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides and I get x is about negative 6 plus or minus 2.2. So negative 6 plus 2.2. I get x is about negative 3.8. And then I would get x is about negative 8.2 because when I add them and then when I subtract them. So here are my 
approximate values for my x-intercepts. So when I said radical, when we crossed out radical form, we didn't leave this square root of 5. We found the square root of 5 and then we worked from there. All right, same thing over here. Um, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, though. I know you're excited. Okay, so we have opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I've got negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 all over 2 times 2. So now I have opposite 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 24 over 4. Negative 6 plus or minus square root of 12 divided by 4. I do the square root of 12 in my calculator and I get about 3.5. So now I have negative 6 plus or minus 3.5 divided by 4. So when I do negative 6 plus 3.5, I get negative 2.5, divide that by 4, and I get x is about negative 0 0.625. And then when I subtract, I get negative 9.5 divided by 4, and I get x is about negative 2.375. So those would be my beautiful x-intercepts. Got to do the same thing over here, except I have to rearrange these, right? So I'm going to subtract the 7x and subtract the 8. So that's going to give me 3x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. So I have my quadratic formula. I'm not going to rewrite it because I've got it over here, but I'm going to look there. So I've got 7 plus or minus the square root, negative 7 squared, minus 4 times 3 times negative 8, all divided by 2 times 3. 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 96 all divided by 6. 7 plus or minus the square root of 145 divided by 6. The square root of 145 is like 12.0 something. Here, hold on. 145 square root. It's like 12.04. So we can't even round it up to 12.1. So we're going to say 7 plus or minus about 12 divided by 6. So when I add the 12, I get 19 divided by 6, which is going to give me about 3.16 repeating. And when I subtract, I get negative 5 divided by 6 gives me about 0 0.83 repeating. And the reason I have to still use about is because, remember, this isn't exactly 12. It's kind of 12. We just couldn't round it up to 12.1. So here are my answers. All right, last page, moving right along. All right, it says determine the x-intercepts. So same thing, we're finding those zeros of the equation's graph. So I'm gonna take out the greatest common factor of x. So I've got x times x minus nine. x equals zero x minus 9 equals 0, add the 9 to both sides, x equals 9. So here are my two y-intercepts. For this one, I'm going to subtract 30. So now I have x squared plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. This is nice because I can do what times what equals negative 30, what plus what equals 7. This is a weird little mark on the page. Let me get rid of that. Hold on. I'm going to move this so that's not there, like, confusing you. I don't even know what that is. I think it's just, like, part of the paper, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so what times...
times what equals negative 30, but plus what equals 7. So I'm going to get 10 and negative 3, 10 and negative 3. So I've got x plus 10 times x minus 3. Set these both equal to 0. Subtract 10. I get x equals negative 10. Add 3. x equals positive 3. All right, we're so close, guys. Express the following in simplest radical form. All right, so this is when we use our factor trees. You guys remember these? So I've got 90 can be broken down to 9 times 10, which is 3 times 3 and 2 times 5. I stop when I get to my prime numbers. I put all of these underneath the radical in numerical order, 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. I find the buddy. It comes out as one value. So I'm going to get 3 square root 10 because 3 is on the outside. That tells me I should square this number, and then the 2 times 5 becomes 10. So 3 squared times 10 would give me back to that 90. All right, for this one, I'm going to do a factor tree of 84. I'm going to do 12 times 7. 12 gives me 6 times 2, 3 times 2. So I've got a 3, a 2, a 2, and a 7. So I'm going to write out all of this underneath here. So I've got 2 times 3, excuse me, 2 times 2, times 3 times 7. I'm going to write out 6 x's and 9 y's. Whew, that's a lot of y's. And then remember, I'm looking for buddies. So this 2 is going to come out. I've got three pairs, so that's three x's coming out. And I've got four pairs of y, so that's four y's coming out. So I'm going to get 2, x to the third, y to the fourth. And then the only thing left in, but underneath is 7 times 3, which is 21, and a little y there hanging out. And I know some of you don't have to write all this out. Some of you can be like, oh, well, that's going to be three pairs. So that's three X's. And that's going to be four pairs with one left over. Like, but I like to expand it to show you guys where I'm getting it from. Last problem. Finally, the height of a baseball that is hit from a batter's box is modeled by the function y equals negative 16x squared plus 96x, where x is the time in seconds the ball is in the air and y is the height of the ball in the air, the ball in feet. After how many seconds does the ball hit the ground? Okay, so we're going to use our x value of the vertex shortcut. So we're going to do opposite b over 2a. We're going to find the vertex. Remember, the vertex tells us how long it took to get up to the highest point. So then we would just double that to figure out how long it was actually in the air, right? So the opposite of b is going to be negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. So negative 96 over negative 32 is going to give me positive 3. So 3 is the x value, which equals the time it took to get up to the vertex point. So then if it takes 3 seconds to get up there, how long is it going to take to get down? Another 3 seconds. So total time in the air is six seconds. Three seconds up, three seconds down. Kind of like that firework one we did where we were like it'd be two seconds up, two seconds down. Or no, yeah, it was four total seconds or the football one or what have yous. Okay, guys, that's it. That's your study guide. The exam is very similar. Let me know if you have any questions.